Hey, what's up guys? This is Forium Yacht back with another Minecraft Dungeons guide. In today's video, I will show you the best weapon and armor enchants out there so you can snowball through those big packs of mobs and also kill bosses without a problem on both Adventure and Apocalypse difficulty. Currently, I am playing on the highest Apocalypse, which is Apocalypse level 6. And as you can see in this little preview video, I am not having any issues with it at all. Both my weapon and my deathcap mushroom allow me to attack very fast and that procs my weapon and chance all the time which allows me to heal up every couple hits and also deal tons and tons of AoE damage to all my enemies. Um, then we have some armor with cooldown reduction and some nice abilities that allow us to use our artifacts even more often and be a little bit more tanky in the game. And the combination of these artifacts, weapon and armor and chance makes you pretty much unstoppable in every single game mode or difficulty. So. First off, a little shout out to Wajo, who recommended me to use the feather instead of the shock powder. I have to be honest, it took a little bit of time to get used to it because it will relocate you every time when you use it and the radius of the stun is not that great, but uh, it gives you a lot of movability, which makes this dungeon crawling even more fun. So dude, thanks for that. Right now, I'm gonna show you the best weapon and armor enchants out there. Guys, let's get right into it. Okay, so here we are. I already prepared some uh, items which you can use as an example for your enchantments. First off, weapons. Um, so I collected some common weapons, but this doesn't mean they are not any good. Uh, if they have three enchantments on them, they can be turned into some pretty crazy killing machines. So first off, this pickaxe right here. You can see that we have many different enchantments. And um, the first one you want to focus on is Radiance, because this one allows you to heal every couple times when you hit a mob. And um, this will do splash healing. So if an ally is playing with you and also fighting with melee weapons, you will also heal them, which is really nice. So um, definitely make sure you get Radiance on your weapon. Then, of course, after some healing, we're going to need some damage as well. And um, I prefer to have AoE damage because otherwise you're going to have to kill mob by mob. And with something like Swirling uh, right here, uh, every last attack uh, in a combo performs a Swirling attack damaging nearby enemies. So this makes the AoE Swirl, which you have seen, at the beginning of my video and it deals tons and tons of damage to all the enemies around you. So you just have to focus a tanky mob and all the mobs around it will die as well. Um, of course there are some cool things which you can experiment with like gravity. It will pull all the mobs towards the weapon's impact but um, I have to be honest if you're sucking in creepers this might be lethal for you so definitely be careful with that one. At the end of the video though I will show you some pretty cool stuff which I did with uh, this hammer right here but um, I'm not gonna spoil that right now. So um, with this pickaxe the third enchant so we already have some healing we have AoE damage and then we want to go for some standard damage as well or another kind of boost. What I really like to take uh, is rampaging after defeating a mob there is some chance this will increase your attack speed so if you're fighting with a slower weapon this can be awesome if you already have a fast weapon you definitely don't need this because we have the death cap mushroom it will give us plenty of attack speed so you don't worry about that um, next up, uh, this is another example. Um, you can go for, for example, Committed. Every time you deal damage to already wounded enemies, you will deal bonus damage. And this is what I currently have on my daggers because they don't have uh, good standard damage. So if you boost them a little bit with this, then um, they will hit like a truck without a problem. Um, then things like looting, don't go for that because this will only increase the chance for consumables to drop, not items, not emeralds or anything like that. And um, this one right here is also really nice. The last attack in a combo launches a shockwave damaging enemies and this is not uh, around you but this is like in front of you in a cone so uh, it is nice to have but I prefer to have a standard AoE like the swirling one. Um, then let's see, um, this is also a nice example of a weapon that could be awesome to have 
Um, here we have the shock wave or actually the radiance. You can choose one of these uh, if you didn't take the radiance right here. Uh, poison cloud is also awesome to have as AoE. However, um, it doesn't deal that much damage. It will stay for a couple seconds, but if you already have some nice gear and dealing tons of damage, then this will not be as effective. Then um, you could also go for leeching to take uh, HP from enemy mobs, but this will only happen after you kill them. So that is, in my opinion, not the best deal to go for. Always go for Radiance. So uh, instead of the leeching, we could go for Thundering, and this will give us a nice chance to deal some really big AoE damage as well. Um, also rampaging on this one, so these weapons can turn into some pretty crazy killing machines. This one, for example, is one that is very similar like the daggers which I'm currently wearing. Um, I have Radiance right here, then Sharpness, so I can increase the standard damage of the weapon, and then we could go for Shockwave or Thundering for AoE damage. So we have the heal, we have extra damage, and we have AoE damage. That is the three things that you want to focus on. So right now, next up, we're going to go to Armor. Um, I have got some examples right here three different armor pieces or well two battle robes because in my opinion you should focus on getting uh, the battle robe and why is that well we already have a standard 30 percent melee damage on it as well as minus 25 percent artifact cooldown and this is really nice to have because every time when your artifacts are on cooldown, you can deal tons of damage with the death cap mushroom. And if you can keep doing that because you have a low cooldown on it, well, you can pretty much keep proking your weapon and armor abilities. And that is exactly what you need. So uh, let's see. We have some combinations right here. Uh, I would go for final shout because when you go low on HP, it will trigger all your artifacts and this means that we will go tanky with our Ironhide amulet, like I showed you in the last video. And then also the attack and movement speed. It will also stun all the enemies around us with the feather. Uh, so final shout is definitely the best of the three right here. Second, um, cooldown. Please go for cooldown reduction. If you have this one on level 3, that's almost 30% reduced cooldown, which is a lot. So you will be able to keep using your artifacts for that attack speed and extra tankiness. What is also pretty good to have is Frenzied, but never take it over cooldown reduction. It will increase your melee and ranged attack speed when you get to half HP, but um, if you're already dealing tons of damage, the mobs will just melt right in front of you. So this might be just overkill to have, and it could ruin one of your enchantment slots. Then the third one, I think this is pretty funny. Um, if you have uh, already a big damage output, you could even go for this one. Because if you have full HP, uh, you can go up to plus 40 increased ranged and melee damage. So you can melt everything around you without a problem. Um, another example right here is uh, protection. This is uh, something that I have on my armor as well. Uh, it gives you a minus 15% damage taken and up on Apocalypse, this can be very useful. Um, then the other one, uh, Potion Barrier. In my opinion, it is very strong when you're fighting against evokers or even bosses because it will give you an insane shield for 9 full seconds if fully upgraded and um, even masses of creepers won't be able to kill you. Then, second enchantment, we would go for Frenzied right here and the third one, Cooldown. You could also go for Chilling. It will reduce the speed of enemy mobs, but if you're focused on attacking and killing them before they will attack you, then uh, the Cooldown Reduction is definitely the number one to go for. Uh, snowball will trigger a stun every second on max upgrade, but um, if you have Cooldown Reduction, you can keep spamming the Light Feather, uh, so definitely go for that one. Um, then. We also have a third example right here, um, protection, cooldown, and then also potion barrier, final shout, or frenzy. You could go for either one of these three, but definitely go for cooldown and protection right there. So um, this is pretty much everything you need to know. Oh, wait, we also have a bow right here. Um, I'm not a big fan of bows because I actually don't use them. I think they're not necessary in the game, only early game, but... Um, what I like to have is fuse shots. So every time when you have your third shot 
hitting an enemy, it will also make an explosion. You can combine this with very nice weapon enchants that allow you to shoot multiple arrows, um, which means you will trigger your fuse shot way much more than you would normally do, and it might actually go for every single arrow that you shoot. Um, then you could go for poison clouds, and for gravity so what you're gonna do right here is you're gonna pull all the mobs next to each other on a very small area uh, with gravity then the poison cloud will deal damage all over the place and at the same time you will deal explosion damage so all the mobs will die at the exact same spot where you're sucking them to with your gravity all right so that's pretty much it for the explanation right now i'm going to show you some examples in uh, the creepy crypt this is my favorite dungeon because uh, there are many different mobs and they will deal tons of damage currently on apocalypse level six so this is the highest difficulty level guys uh, but you will see that we won't have a problem dealing with these guys at all Okay, so here we are. Um, we have our three artifacts, the feather. Um, currently, I have so much cooldown reduction because I actually found a battle rope with two times cooldown reduction. These guys will stack, so um, I can keep flying around with my feather and stun enemies around me. So it is already pretty easy this way. Um, but um, if you use your mushroom and the ironhide amulet, you can go really, really balls deep in these guys. Look at that. So I can just keep spamming with my daggers because the attack speed is insane. My radiance will proc every couple times and then also the AoEs roll around it. And um, I'm getting hit pretty hard by this fire, but at the same time, I'm healing every time when I get a little bit lower. Right now, again, rolling inside the battle and then using my mushroom and my ironhide amulet, which are almost on cooldown already, so I can just use them again. So you can pretty much spam your artifacts without a problem. Okay, so now I'm going to search for a big pack of mobs. I think this one looks pretty good, but um, I would like to see some enchanted mobs because this is actually no match for me, as you can see. Um, I can just keep standing in the fires and all the mobs are hitting me, but at the same time, I just keep healing myself. And um, I'm pretty much always at full HP. Um, my cooldowns are getting ready every couple seconds, especially for this stun. You can pretty much hop around every second if you want to with this cooldown reduction. Okay, so now my little treat. Uh, I went to the redstone mines because I wanted to show you a weapon which I was experimenting with with some really nice enchants. Um, let's equip it right here. This one is the Hammer of Gravity has tons and tons of melee damage it's quite slow but in combination with my artifact death cap mushroom you can have insane attack speed and you can already see it it pulls all the enemies inside um one small window and it does great splash damage then we have the shockwave which will deal damage in front of us the swirling which will deal damage around us and then also the radiance enchantment which allows us to heal every couple hits and since this hammer of gravity um, only has uh, one attack animation, the shockwave will trigger 24-7, uh, as well as the swirl. Um, I'm getting dealt some damage right here, uh, which is not nice, but um, look at this, guys. Every last attack in a combo launches a shockwave, damaging enemies. Every last attack of a combo performs a swirling attack, damaging nearby enemies. And if I equip this one, you will see that it will trigger every single attack because the attack animation is simply one. So guys, look at this. We are fighting against two spawners. All the mobs are getting destroyed in a second. Um, so what we're doing right here... Oh, this was not meant to happen. Anyways, um, what we're doing right here is we're pulling all the mobs towards this little window and then we can attack them and they will all die at the same time because of our AoE damage. So we just found some skeleton horsemen right here and they are already dead. Okay, so here we are at the redstone monstrosity or the redstone giant. I'm not exactly sure how it's called, but uh, let's go for it. So I am dealing tons and tons of damage with this one. 
you can just keep using your Ironhide amulet at the same time, heal a little bit with your potions, but um, currently we didn't have much trouble and you can of course revive afterwards. Oh, and we just found a splendid rope. Let's check out which enchants are on this bad guy. Um, it doesn't look fantastic, but um, if you have 50% artifact damage, you can do some crazy stuff with that as well. But um, unfortunately, there are not the enchants on it, which I was hoping for. Um, so we have the final shout, definitely useful. Then also the frenzied or protection, but um, we are just missing our cooldown reduction. It's nice to have a lot of cooldown reduction, remember that guys. So yeah, this is pretty much everything you need to know in order to snowball through Apocalypse on the highest difficulty. Guys, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and leave a comment down below if this video was useful. Um, and yes, I'll see you in the next one. If you have suggestions, definitely leave them in the comments down below as well. Guys, Foriam out.